Hi, I'm Brian Clanton, and we're going to look today at some of the features that differ uh, on the 24 Dutch Star 4311 floor plan. All right, so components that are normally located in the front overhead cabinet uh, on the other Dutch Star floor plans are located here for accessibility. And right here we have the BMS uh, power on off switch. Um, that's new for 24. Um, there's still the same switch right on the side of the BMS unit down in the basement. Uh, it can be turned on and off at either location. Uh, if this has went off um, and you're having to turn it back on uh, due to low power, uh, in the lithium battery bank uh, being down to uh, 10%, you definitely want to get it, uh, the charge going on it. You do not want to run it down uh, past that 10% without putting a charge on it. Uh, next to it here, we have the Victron inverter remote panel. We basically just use this panel for a display uh, so you can see what's going on with the inverter, whether it's uh, charging or if it's inverting and, and how much amperage and stuff is being used. Um, this is pre-configured before leaving Numar. Uh, and a couple of things that you'll want to know is like, you know, if you go into inverter one and then right up here where it says switch, uh, this is where you can turn the inverter on, off, or the charger only on. But just remember that this does need to be on for your charger section to be able to charge your batteries. Underneath there, we have the jarred awning switches and controls. You have a light, light switch uh, here at the top corner. You have a couple of lock and unlock buttons here. Uh, you can uh, select your uh, channels um, by going back and forth here. Channel zero would be all awnings. Uh, channel one would be the front awning. Channel two would be the rear awning. Um, and then you can push the in, out, or stop buttons uh, to get the awning uh, where you would like them. And then uh, based on whichever channel you selected, the on-off uh, for the lights will only control that channel that you've selected. Next over here, we have the Weingard antenna. Uh, this is one that you'll want to turn on anytime you want to watch air TV or free TV, digital TV. Um, so you turn it on and you hit the search button. It will go through and search for available channels that the antenna can see. This does not program your TV. It only is searching for signal for the antenna. Uh, once it's done searching, you can fine tune uh, back and forth here with these buttons if, if needed. The main thing to remember on this one right here is it has to be on if you're going to watch Air TV. And if you want to, if you have part cable available and you want to watch cable TV, which hooks up in the electrical compartment outside, this must be turned off. This, when you turn this on, it acts as a power booster and it also acts as a selector switch. So uh, the cable that comes in from outside goes, goes to this control and it does not let that signal go through to the TV or TVs uh, if you have it turned on. 
So on your slide outs, you have a slide out switch here. For off door slide, that would be your driver side. Uh, that's a HWH slide out. You can run it in and out. From here, uh, there's a, a blank switch here uh, because there is no passenger side slide out in the front of the unit due to it being a handicap unit. All right, over here we have the entrance door awning. Uh, just simply uh, press those to extend and retract it. Uh, entrance door awning light, uh, that's just to turn the light, light strip on the awning on and off. Uh, off door side window living room awning. Um, so it's where you can extend and retract uh, your two um, window awnings for your living room window and your um, on both sides of the coach, your door side and off door side. Security lights, uh, you can turn those on and off from here. They're just momentary contact switches. Uh, your block heater, another momentary contact switch that turns on a uh, relay to supply coach, or to supply power back to the uh, block heater outlet. Optional satellite system is blacked out on this particular coach. Exterior step. So this switch, if you desire for your step to uh, not retract every time you open and close the door, uh, you can turn this switch on and it will override the door switch unless you start the coach and then that will retract it. Exterior LED lights uh, below slide. So any of the slide outs that have the LED lights underneath them that would turn those lights on and off. All right, so next we'll take a quick look at the touchstone fireplace and the remote. So fireplace is there. You can just turn the power on and off. Uh, if you use the button up here that looks like a flame that will change the color of the flame kind of scroll through the different colors and this one here that looks like a light bulb uh, controls the brightness of the um, flame you can uh, put it on a timer with this one and then you can turn the heat portion on and off uh, with this one here and you'll see that a couple of led lights come on there uh, over to the top based on which one of those is selected and then to turn it off of course just press the off button all right so we're gonna look at the kib panel for a second here uh, on the handicap unit it's located underneath the kitchen sink uh, it will time out like this and go black once you touch it the one time go to like the splash screen and give you your icons here on the bottom. So the home screen will allow you to turn the water pump uh, on and off. It'll allow you to top off your tank or uh, enable your auto fill or uh, turn on the block heater. In addition, it also gives you your house and chassis battery voltages. Uh, your house uh, will show in a percentage of state of charge. Um, and then you have your uh, fresh gray and black tank readings below that. And then also on the screens gives you a uh, a portion of the light controls that are available along with the uh, TV uh, lift up and down buttons. On the power screen, 
uh, it gives you a more detailed look at your batteries and the statuses of uh, what's going on here. Um, and uh, any battery errors would be listed over here if there were any. Uh, this is where you can touch the EMS button and you can go in here if you're plugged in say to a 15 amp or 20 amp circuit um, you know a 30 amp circuit or 50 amp circuits not available uh, you can you can change that setting right here Numar does recommend that you stay plugged into a 50 or 30 amp circuit um, however there's times that you may not have that available and this will allow you to um, change that amperage so you're not blowing breakers so for your AGS automatic gen start screens you can turn the power on and off you can click the setup you can set your quiet time, start and stop times. You can also set your house and chassis batteries for how long they will charge and when they will kick on. From your automatic generator start screens it will show you here the status uh, like right now we're plugged into shore power but if the generator was running that would be uh, lit up if we were in our quiet time settings uh, within that period of time uh, our quiet time would be lit up and then <clears throat> if the auto gen start was active and it would show us which um, item, whether the chassis battery is being low, the house battery is being low, or the uh, demand from the HVAC uh, caused the auto gen start system to start and run. We'll go on to the floor heat here. So the floor heat screens, uh, you have to turn each one on and set the desired setting, high, medium, or low. So the fan will allow you to control the kitchen or bathroom uh, fantastic fans so there again you turn it on and you get to select uh, high medium or low and you can also select the rain override function which will allow the fan to keep running even if it's uh, get some rain on it or moisture on the rain sensor strip that's um, especially helpful when it's near the shower and you have a bunch of, bunch of condensation on it from the shower. Just remember if you do enable the rain override, if you leave your coach and you uh, have your fan on and it starts to really, you know, thunderstorm heavy rain, uh, you may come back to some rain being in your coach. It will not automatically close. The HVAC screen uh, will allow you to set your uh, cooling and heating for each zone. There's a living room, kitchen, and bedroom. And you can set uh, the code to mo the mode to cool, auto, or heat pump or you can select a furnace, uh, which in this case 
is the OASIS system. So for the OASIS system to work, the burner or the elements will have to be on. You can use the burner only, which will use diesel fuel, or if you're plugged in to shore power and you have, you know, plenty of shore power, um, you can use the AC elements. You can use both of them in combination. Um, that's not an issue. You will get the most heat out of your Oasis burner, uh, especially if you're trying to heat the coach and uh, use water, use hot water. So. All right, and then uh, you can just select the temperature settings you want by going up and down and um, you'll see the different icons come on here the flame was when it was on furnace uh, cooling you'll probably have a snowflake come on there a short delay and that stuff you can see the delay or hourglass came on the screen there means it's in delay mode all right so once the air conditioner has kicked on then you'll get the snowflake icon on there kind of gives you an idea of what's going on uh, after the screen has not been touched for approximately two minutes it will revert back to this screen and uh, then if you still don't touch it within a, a another short delay then it will black out we're going to go ahead and move on to bluetooth so uh, it gives you the instructions here if you'll go uh, to the app store and download the connected solutions app and follow the directions on the screen here you can pair uh, this to your phone or tablet or whatever, and then you can um, you can control these from your paired device. The same settings that are on this screen. We'll move on to the light section. So this is your lighting control section. Uh, so your main, this side over here, your main uh, lights, you will stay on on any of them. They're the same ones. What changes is when you go between living room and outside and kitchen is the available lights on this side. So as you can see, if we go to the outdoor, it allows us to do our security lights. If we go to the kitchen, you know, brings up all the ki kitchen lights in, in that area. Uh, same with the bathroom and then the bedroom. Gives you a brief overview of the KIB system. And there's more information in Noodle. In the Dutch Stars, the shades are controlled via two remotes. There's a remote for the front half of the coach and then there's a remote for the bedroom uh, area of the coach so you can look on the screen and flip through the available shades and run them up and down individually or you can go to like channel two, all night shades, or channel one, all day shades. And you can run them all up in that area. Just remember, when it says all, that means all in that area. Uh, so all in the front.
for the bedroom remote is not going to do the front ones. It will only do the ones in the back area. And then the same with the, um, the remote that controls the front half of the coach. So like the living room area, din dinette and, the, and everything, that remote, uh, when you press the uh, all button on that one, it will bring pretty much all the shades up in the front of the coach except for the um, windshield shade. That one is controlled separately off of the dash switch. All right, another difference in the 4311 floor plan is where your breakers and fuses are located. On the other floor plans, these would normally be like in a bathroom or a half bath, but it would be right here in the 4311. So here you have a couple of GFIs that um, power up the floor heat circuits. So if they're ever tripped, the green light's not on like that, uh, that zone, that floor heat zone will not work until you come back in and reset the GFI. Um, we have the 120 volt breaker box here and all the breakers, they're labeled uh, for what they go to. If you ever have one that's down or partially down, uh, that breaker is either off or tripped. So to reset it, if it's tripped, you have to push it all the way down to the off position and then turn it back on. Uh, down below, there are some more fuses over here, uh, 12 volt fuses. Um, all but the one silver one there. If they blow, they have to be replaced. And there are some spare fuses right here on the side. If you do need to replace a fuse, just make sure that you use the same um, amperage fuse. And the fuse label is located here. Um, it corresponds with those fuses there. They're labeled F and a number. And so you can come up here and see what they control. And then you also, on this side over here, you also have a sub panel over here for the inverted circuits. So anyways, that's where your uh, breakers and fuses are located on the 4311. We're gonna look at the uh, handicap door and the uh, lift here on the 4311. So you'll get a couple of remotes like this along with the coach, lock and unlock. And so unlock will unlock and open the door. So this is important that when you're in a building or any, any place that you're going to operate this remote that you have adequate clearance. You can see that's a rather large door. Sticks out much farther than the slide out or the uh, entrance door. So just make sure you have clearance before you uh, push the unlock button. So the lift itself, um, you can reach up here and there's your a handheld remote so that you can use the lift. Right here, the main thing is, is you have to turn the power button on. It's recommended that you leave that off after you stow the, the lift. To use the wheelchair lift, there's a remote switch. So the first thing you'll want to do from the closed position is unfold it. So you'll hit the unfold switch and hold it. Once it fully unfolds, 
then you'll be able to run, hit the down switch. The lift will continue to go down until it touches the ground. And once it does that, the ramp will unfold. Okay. So at this point, you can get on with the wheelchair and your helper can press the up button. It will make the uh, ramp come up. it gets to the fully up position, the inside ramp will fold down. You'll be able to go inside the coach and then you can fold the lift up to stow it. Once it's fully stowed, you can Place the remote back up here in the little cutout there and flip the power switch off. At that point, you're ready to hit the lock button on the remote, which will close the door. That concludes the wheelchair lift and door operation. All right, so on the 24 Dutch Star, they have the lithium option plan and you can get it with either two or three batteries. So, and also if you get the lithium package, you're gonna have uh, the Victron inverter uh, versus uh, the other 24 video we shot uh, had the AGM batteries in it, so it had the uh, Magnum inverter in it. Another uh, difference um, in the 4311 I wanted to point out uh, was the shower. Uh, the other floor plans have the shower miser system installed in them. Uh, the handicap shower is a shower only, and there is no shower miser um and then you just turn this on to to the desired temperature and get it coming out of your uh, shower wand here you can adjust the uh, spray on your shower wand uh, as needed and um, but i just wanted to point that out that there is no shower miser on this particular floor plan uh, one other thing, we'll step back into the uh, bedroom here just a little bit. <clears throat> one other thing that's different is normally on the other uh, floor plans, you would have sliding pocket doors. Um, this has a wider doorway for the wheelchair accessibility. Um, and it has a different style door. So this bifold door, you can just grab this little piece here, unlatch it, simply pull this over to the channel here on the side and it uh, latches in there with some magnetic catches. Once you're done, you want to stow it for travel, just pull it out of there, push it back over here and Reinstall the bungee.